Welcome everyone to another video, it's good to be back. Today we are going to make this simple vector portrait inspired by the one and only MKBHD on Android and iPhone. I'm going to go in depth and explain the tools we'll be using for this and how they work. If you have been a subscriber of this channel, you'll remember that I have already made this video. You must be wondering, why am I making it again? Well, the other one had some copyrighted music. When I tried to remove it through the YouTube's editor, YouTube muted the entire video. What gives, YouTube? And the video also lacked some information, so this time I'll go into more details. Alright, the first thing you're gonna do is install Infinite Designer. On iOS, you can get Infinite Painter from the App Store, which works the same way, except it is not vector based. Which is not a huge deal unless you're making this for a paid client. In which case you can install Adobe Illustrator which is also free. Shout out to Fun Size Nomad for the iPhone footage because I don't own an iPhone. So thanks a lot Nomad. Once you're in the app, tap new. Give your project a name. Disable infinite and give your canvas 800 width and 800 height. Because for this video we will make a square avatar for social media. Select white as your background color then tap create. Once you're inside your canvas, tap the three dots up top tap import and select your source or guide image from gallery. We will use Marquez Brownie once again for this tutorial and leave a link to download this image in the description so you can follow along. Once you select your image, you will see a pop-up asking you if you want to import the image as trace or image. Trace will import the image and lock it so you can't interact with it. Image will import it as another layer which will allow you to move it around and stuff. So we will select trace because we don't want to interact with it. If you want, you can scale up and position your image however you want. Since the image is already square and it's placed in the right position, I'll tap the tick icon to save changes. Because we selected trace, the app has decreased the image's opacity. So we will go into the layers panel, tap the trace layer and bring the opacity back to 100. So we can see everything. Alright, one more thing before we start tracing. Go to the app settings and disable rooted canvas if you haven't already. And change long press to eyedropper. Because we will be zooming in a lot, we don't need to be very precise with rotation and it gets annoying. Okay, let's now take a look at the tool we'll be using and how to use it. Tap the tools icon up top and select pen. Now the pen tool is fascinating. I absolutely love using this pen tool in Photoshop and using it on a phone is amazing because it works very well. So here's how it works. You first select a brush stroke. We will select a ballpoint pen. Then you select your brush size. We will keep it around halfway. Then you select your brush color. We will select white so we can see it better. To make a path, you tap where you want to start. I want to start from under his ear so I'll tap here. Then I'll tap again right in the middle of his chin. Now unless you want to make him into Finney's Flynn, we need to curve this line so it goes smoothly around his chin. To do that, tap in the middle of the path and bring it down. Now let's say you want to turn him into Spongebob and we want the path to be more pointy. For that, you tap the middle dot to enable or disable curve. You tap and hold the dot and bring it to either the dot in front or back and release your finger when the dot turns red. And just like that you go around the face and make a clean and smooth path. One thing you should keep in mind when making the path is to not tap the tick icon or the, or the tick button while you are making your path. If you do you will save your path and lose your ability to edit this path and you will have to redo the whole thing again. Once you get close to your path, you can either bring your path to the starting dot to complete your shape or tap the circle button and readjust your path. Now that we have a perfect shape of the head, go into the tools menu and select fill. Tap and hold anywhere on the screen to activate eyedropper and select a color from the image. Marquez has a dark skin so we will select a somewhat dark and less saturated color. Tap inside the shape and then tap the stroke line to change its color. And we now have a vector shape of the face. Go into layers and change this layer's name to face. And create another layer on top of it by tapping the plus icon. We will call this one hair. Tap the eye color on the face layer to make it invisible. So we can see our image and make sure the hair layer is active. You will see a blue rectangle around the layer when it is active. Select the pen tool again and make a shape the same way we did of our face. We will start from his ear again. Don't, don't forget to zoom in to create a cleaner path. The smoother your path is, the more cleaner your vector will look at the end. Once you're done, save changes. And instead of selecting color from the image, you will select a gray color from the color picker instead. Select the fill tool, then tap inside the shape and the stroke line itself to fill them with color. Let's disable the background layer and see how it looks. I think that looks perfect. Let's now make his neck and then his shirt. If you are enjoying this video so far, make sure you head down in the comments and tell me what I should make a video about next. Go on, I'll wait.
Done already? Alrighty then. Open up the layers panel and create a new layer. Rename it to neck. Tap and hold this layer and move it all the way down below the face layer. Hide this panel and with the pen tool again, start tracing your neck. Since this layer is below the face layer, you can bring the trace on top of the face layer to complete your path and it will not be disabled. We will be tracing the shirt on top of this neck layer so it doesn't matter if you mess around with the bottom either. Once your trace is complete, select the color from your face layer with the eyedropper then select color and go to the color properties. Bring the blacks or B down a tiny bit then tap outside to close this window. Fill your shape with color. Go into tools and select the move tool. Tap right at the edge of your neck shape to select the outer line then tap the delete button to delete it. This will become a distraction later so it's best we get rid of it now. Let's now add a clean shadow for the neck to give it a little more of depth. Create a new layer on top of this layer and rename it to shadow. Select the pen tool and create a path like this. I can't really explain how but like this. If you want the shadow on the other side you just make your path flip the other way. You'll notice I'm not very precise with this one and the neck is going outside of the neck shape. That is because we will be removing everything that is outside this layer. We will fill this with black color and just like before we will remove the outer stroke with the move tool. In the layers panel double tap the neck layer then tap duplicate. Select the shadow layer then tap merge button to merge both layers. Go into tools, tap select tool and tap both shadow and neck shape to activate them. Scroll all the way to the end then select combine and from the options select intersect. That's the third option in the list. What this will do is basically keep everything that is blue and delete the rest. Tap the tick icon to commit changes then select the fill tool and fill this shape with black. Go back to the layers panel and decrease this layers opacity to 10. And we now have a clean looking shadow. The rest of this process goes the exact same way. For shirt you create a layer below everything else so your face and neck is on top. I will speed the rest of this process because I don't see any point in explaining the same thing again. If you have any questions or you're confused about a certain thing, you can leave your questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them as fast as I can. Alright, once your vector portrait is finished, we need to add a nice background as a finishing touch. Tap the circle next to the very bottom layer called paper in the layers panel. We'll tinge it to a nice desaturated red. If you want, you can also add a drop shadow by simply creating a layer below everything, making a straight shape with the pen tool, filling it with black color and decreasing the opacity once again. One thing you should keep in mind is if your neck shadow is facing right, you, sh you should also create the drop shadow facing right. You know, for the consistency and realism. And that concludes our minimalist vector portrait. If you found this video useful, make sure you leave a like, subscribe and tap that bell so you don't miss any future videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you in the next video. Peace out. <laughs>